Hey folks, welcome to part 9 of my refight of Brandywine using GMT's Great Battles of the American Revolution series. We're at the top of turn 6. The British are the initiative side. They go first, and that'll be followed by the Americans. So let's jump into this game and see what the British are up to. The British are the initiative player. They go first. Uh, they basically uh, secured initiative automatically by ignoring, or well, utilizing the no T-stop rule. 3.7 is the rule in the scenarios booklet, which basically means uh, his how is not going to be stopping his forces for a tea break as they enter from this road at this side of the map. They're going to keep on pushing forward and engage the force of Sterling, which is up here in this area. And yeah, one clarification I need to make, because I think uh, during uh, various episodes of this refight, I've been saying that to get a decisive victory, the British need to secure two objectives, one of which is up top, right here, the Worthton town. It's the town. There's a hex in there they have to secure. The other one was over here, which is the road leading to Philadelphia. They need to have both of them. And that's not correct. They, they only have to have one of those objective hexes uh, in their control, regardless of Patriot adjacency, at the end of any American turn to secure a British decisive victory. So that's going to make things a little bit less daunting. Uh, they need either one of those hexes secured with parade order infantry uh, that they control. So it can't be cavalry, uh, it can be light infantry, uh, and it could be Germans or uh, Tory infantry as well. The wording is British player infantry. So that's any infantry parade order that the British player controls. At least that's the way I'm reading it. Uh, anyway, that uh, just wanted to make that clarification. They don't have to control both those hexes. So we're about to get into the turn, turn six for the British, and I'm going to start off with the movement. Uh, I've already put the reinforcements. I'll show them in a second. But as far as movement, down here, I think what we're going to do, uh, well, obviously I'm going to focus my forces down here to drive Maxwell out of that position. Green is on his way to reinforce Maxwell in this area here. Uh, if Housen needs to secure this high ground with his forces over here, uh, I've been holding back the German units, which are the green ones, uh, kind of keeping them in reserve until Howe arrives in force, and then I'm going to commit for a full-out assault on the Ford, which is located here with this disrupted Patriot unit. We want to take that Ford and make a crossing and take these heights. This is known as Proctor's position, Proctor's battery position. I need to take that and deny it uh, from the Americans to prevent them from gaining a decisive victory at the end of 12 turns. So I think I might start pushing forward at that Ford whilst engaging Green down here. Uh, I'm going to think about that, whether I want to wait another turn for how to arrive in force before I start forcing a crossing, or do I want to do it now, push ahead now. Uh, we shall see. I'll think about that, and I'll show you guys what I decided. And as far as to the north of the Brandywine, here's the reinforcements that are coming on for the British. Uh, they're going to have this nice stack which includes some Dragoons, uh, some German horse, I believe. Is that German horse? Let me see this. What is that? Okay. All right. Light troops, basically. There's some rifle-armed Jaegers in here. It's mostly Germans, uh, but they are the initial forces of Howe's flanking force. They will be arriving first at this hex. And we're basically going to be moving swiftly across this ford up the road uh, and engaging these initial forces of Sterling, which is some rifles. Now, one thing to note here is because I don't have to worry as much about the road to Philadelphia, which is up there, way up there, this hex right there, you can see it, just it's that little red star, you can barely see it. But uh, if we want to focus on taking that, 
And I think that would be the logical objective of Howe's force at this point. We're probably going to want to use some uh, direct movement along the road using strategic movement. We'll get there the quickest. If I can do that, that's great. I don't know how I'm going to move in that direction and reach it in six turns, fighting my way through it uh, off of the road. So it's going to be a little tricky exactly where I want to go. But the first thing I want to do is have some forces move up this road, engage the, the rifle pa patriot, patriot unit here, and start doing some work on the Birmingham Meeting House because the Patriots need that as well as Proctor's battery position to secure a decisive victory at the end of 12 turns. Well, if I can't take Proctor's battery, and I showed that off previously, uh, I'm going to need to take this. So there's definitely going to have to have some troops engaging there no matter what I do. And at the same time, I want to uh, hopefully slip some troops through on the road up to Dilworthton, which is way up there. And that's the objective for the Patriots. Again, right there it is, right up there. And this is the road I'm looking at, this path right along here. I think it goes this way and cuts off. So if the British can secure a path through there with some troops, four strength points worth, hey, that's great. But we'll see. We'll see in turn seven what the situation looks like. In this turn, we're basically going to bring in our initial light troops. We're going to engage the Patriots of Sterling's force as quickly as possible. And at the same time, we're going to uh, do some damage, hopefully, to Maxwell's force down there in the far right with Knifhausen. And uh, I'm going to contemplate whether or not I'm going to force a crossing this turn or not as I hinted at before. So that's what's going on, folks. Let's see what my movement looks like for the British uh, during turn six. All right, finished the movement and the rallies. And unfortunately, this was a little disappointing in terms of rallies anyway. So you can see this unit remains disrupted. It is currently a strength three plus one morale. And it failed. So attempted its morale or its rally, and it failed. And another thing you'll notice, as we zoom in a little bit here, uh, one thing you will notice is that I did commit these troops. They crossed the run, and they're now on the flank of Maxwell's position. I also moved some guns in this stack right under the Strength 3 infantry. They were here. They can't cross the breastworks, unfortunately. So Gennifhausen himself is alone in this hex with Frazier's Highlanders, a strength five plus one, I believe, uh, which is decent enough. Remember, there's a maximum of strength six uh, in a hex, plus guns. Uh, what else are we looking at here? This little situation here is going to be tricky. We've got some pinned units engaged. There's only one unit for the British here. It's a strength four plus two morale, which means they're pretty good at holding out with a plus two morale. But they're pinned, so they have to resolve their combat. I did not take an army morale penalty by moving them out. Uh, we'll see what happens. It's going to be a tricky fight over here. Green himself is over there. There's a lot of, lot of strength points on both sides being engaged for that high ground. So that's going to be an interesting fight this turn. Uh, also, if we shift over here, I did basically slide the cannons uh, hex over. You can see them lined up. And also the infantry that were protecting them also pretty much slide, slid over one hex as well. Except here. This guy did not move, the infantry. Uh, and this, this battery is undefended currently. I don't uh, anticipate the rebels being able to reach that hex and engage it, therefore capture my guns. So I'm not too worried about that. We won't be able to fire this turn, or this part of the turn. We'll be able to fire during the Americans segment of the turn. But we're lined up in anticipation of that. One other thing I did commit to, besides the shifting of forces, was I committed Grant himself to this hex. He's in light woods. He's on the west side of the Brandywine. He's not across yet. But he has, I believe that's the 55th foot. And the 15th, I believe. Six strength points in all. And they are ready to assault that position at that primary ford, which is currently held by a disrupted strength three unit. Uh, I believe that said Parker. So 
there's going to be a combat there for the fort. And as far as Howe's initial forces arriving, this is as far as we got um, the stack right here. Got some rifles, or Jaegers actually. They do have rifles though. There's two units with rifles there uh, with a black background. I should point that out. Uh, they're not as good as the ones with the white background in close combat anyway. Uh, Emmy sets are bringing up the rear. Uh, and there are two, the two cavalry units. One is German. And of course we have Jagoons here. They're, they've veered off the road. They're now in the field. They were not able to use strategic movement. Uh, I did use strategic movement here with the stack. But they couldn't go any further because that's a zone of control of an enemy unit. So they had to halt here. But they did get a couple extra hexes forward. So that's the initial forces deployed. We're almost ready to engage Sterling's force. We're not able to do it this turn. So it looks like this is where all the close combats are going to take place. And of course, we're going to start off with a defensive fire for the Patriots. They do have some cannons there, as you can see, toward the left of Proctor's battery. There's quite a few cannon. Uh, and that's about it. Down here at that ferry, I think it's Brinton's ferry, uh, Gray did actually withdraw one hex to this position. He was able to rally that one unit, by the way, from Disrupted. Uh, but they did fall back one during the movement phase just to prevent being fired on in case the rally was not successful. So they're in this location here. They're out of range. They're at four hexes. They won't be fired on by this stack, or that cannon, rather. Uh, but yes, there will be some fire up in this direction. You also notice the Dragoons here that were further uh, west. Did move up to a position here, probing the enemy, seeing what's up there. And I've currently spotted uh, Sullivan himself with a battery of guns and some infantry. So there's a strong presence of Patriots up there on the hill. Uh, didn't really do anything else. So let's go into the defensive fire for the Patriots, and then we're going to get into some rifle fire, which I don't think there'll be much of. Uh, up here we do have a rifle unit. There might be another one hidden away in here. Ferguson's is located here with this battery. He will fire. I'm sure of it. Uh, we'll see what his options are. And then we'll get into the close combats. All right, folks, let's do the defensive fire and rifle fire. And one thing I should point out before we go any further is the current momentum situation, which is two for the British. And there's five in the pool, and the British have two. <clears throat> also, the morale situation. You'll notice that the Patriots currently... Uh, are in the fatigued army morale zone. So they're basically going to have minus one to all units' current morale. So whatever their printed morale value is, it's going to be negative one. And of course, their initiative is no modifier to it. So that's unfortunate for the Patriots. Uh, also, the British are currently at 17. They did go up one because of a rally from disruption. So they're at 17 currently. So that's the situation so far. And again, uh, for being in this high morale zone, the British will not have any penalties uh, to their morale units' morale ratings. Whatever's printed on the counter is what they have. All right, let's get into shooting. All right, finished the defensive artillery fire for the Patriots and did the uh, rifle fire as well for both sides. Uh, Absolutely none of the artillery for the Patriots was effective. Uh, where it was in range, it just was not able to cause any damage or harm. Uh, Proctor's battery position does have a battery of guns there. They can see Grant and his stack. They did take a shot. Nothing. Uh, the other artillery here fired in this position here against some infantry. And these two batteries also fired in this position against the infantry that are in that stack. And it was ineffective. And that was it for defensive fire. However, there was some artillery here as well. I think, maybe not. I thought maybe there was some guns. No. Well, if there is hidden away in there, they were not effective. Uh, as far as rifle fire is concerned, the only place where there was some rifles was over here. Ferguson's 
uh, as well as the rifles located here and here. They did fire, and you'll notice that Gniffhausen is no longer in this hex. He took some rifle fire, Fraser's unit underneath him, uh, and they were forced to retreat out of that position. So once again, that important position, the crest of that hill, those breastworks, uh, it is now vacant. Gniffhausen was forced to withdraw with Fraser's regiment of foot. They are currently located here, the foot of the slopes in preparation for combat, which is next. Uh, one thing I got to do is I do have to resolve the fire for Frasers. He is in here. He's a rifle unit at a reduced. Uh, he's been flipped already, unfortunately. He will also fire, and I believe he's going to be firing in this hex here. And I will resolve that and get back to you in one second, and then we're going to get into the close combats. Oops. And one other thing before we get into that, Made a little mistake here. I was supposed to attach them as sets to the chasseurs. Um, this unit right there. And basically they they attach themselves to other German units. <clears throat> They're basically like a very small caliber cannon. Uh, so currently I attached them to the chasseurs, which were here. I just moved them back. So it was a little mistake I did during movement. I forgot about that. So currently, that's where they are located, and obviously there's no rifle fire or cannon fire to resolve up there. So let's get back to Ferguson's and see how well he does. All right, Ferguson's was not effective. I put down some fire on this hex here against the non-rifle-armed light infantry. Um, ineffective. So now we're going to get into the close combat. So I'm kind of zoomed in here for you guys because there's a lot going on, a lot of options. There's basically... a uh, at least two, maybe three areas where we're going to resolve some combat. Well, four. Uh, in fact, let's look at this one here with Grant. Uh, he is adjacent to this disrupted unit. There will be a combat. He has substantial advantage here against these disrupted units. Strength three, but I think he has a nice strength six. Yes, he does. Uh, both his units, well, one unit has a plus one morale rating. So that's a good strong position, and plus he is engaged as well. So Grant's going to fight a little combat here against that unit. He might actually win that. So there is that combat. Down here, uh, we have Maxwell and his small unit, strength two, uh, rifle armed. And they are being engaged by the 44th and the 49th foot. And I believe there's some cannon in here, which will play no role in the actual fighting. Uh, but this is going to be a strength six attack against Maxwell's position. Not good. And this is all taking place at the foot of the high ground. So this will be an important combat uh, at the moment. Uh, although Maxwell is in charge there, they will be able to use tactics cards, more optional cards. And there is an open flank here, I believe. Uh, another combat is here, where Ferguson is located. Uh, there's two units in this hex. One of them is going to have to fight here against this rifle-armed stack. And there's a strength 3 plus 2 Virginian unit in there. Hmm, that's interesting. It's going to be a tough nut to crack. Uh, that's going to have to be engaged by either Ferguson and the unit under him, or at least one of them. And, yeah, that's got to be dealt with. And finally, the final combat, an important one, where Green is leading this assault. I believe that's a strength six stack going against uh, these two British units. We have a pinned unit here of strength four, which has to fight this unit of pinned troops. Uh, it's pretty equal. I think the British have uh, one strength point advantage. But yeah, there's going to be a big fight here, and I'll show you the results of that. I'm not going to get into the details of where exactly each unit is committing their attacks, but let's see the results of this series of combats for the high ground here, where Maxwell's position is. All right, so that was close combat, and this is the look of it at the end. Uh, start at the top here with Grant. If you remember, he was in this woods hex, and he attacked the disrupted unit that was at this primary ford, as you can just see there. Uh, he was victorious. He was able to use some tactics against that unit and so on. Uh, the disrupted unit was forced to retreat one hex, and it's currently located here. Uh, and then he advanced the entire stack into that ford. So he now has control of the ford. 
we can get some troops across quickly. Uh, next up, we went down here, Maxwell and the unit that he was fighting, I believe in this hex, which is now occupied by the units that was attacking him, he was captured. Yes, Maxwell was captured, as well as the unit that was with him. He was unable to retreat, and that is unfortunate. It gave up a half a victory point to the British because of Maxwell's capture. Uh, in addition, uh, it cost the army morale, which I'll show the current army morales, but it cost the Patriots' army morale um, as well for that. Uh, the British advanced into the position. So Maxwell is gone from the battle. He has been captured. Very unfortunate for the Patriots. Uh, and very good success for the, for the British, I have to say. This little flank attack from this direction really paid off. I knew it would. It was just a matter of uh, deciding whether or not I wanted to actually push from that direction, since I really want to get across this way. But it does secure the pike, or the road in this case. So it makes sense all in all. Uh, what else did we have? Uh, there was a lot going on in this area here, as you can see. The pinned units fought. There was... Uh, uh, can it so He was thrown back in the shooting, if I remember correctly. Yeah, where's Ferguson? He is right there. All right, so what happened here is there was a diversion against this stack of American units, taking them out of the fight. They did not have to be attacked. And the units that were across from him attacked elsewhere. And that was against this hex. This guy was here. There was substantial strength here. Uh, of course, the British would be taking a shift to the left uh, in the Patriots' favor for doing this diversion. But it was effective. And it did throw this unit back. And the British advanced into that hex trying to think where that unit went. I think it was just a retreat result, and this is that unit, I think, somewhere in here. Uh, also, also we had one final combat that was here. Uh, green going against the Queen's Rangers, which is at its reduced side, as you can see. Uh, I believe they were located here. And it was overwhelming odds against the Queen's Rangers, and uh, the result of this fight was they were thrown back. And Green made uh, use of his tactics, his tactic choices, of course. But all in all, I don't think tactics choices played a role in much in any of these combats. They were pretty much either, you know, zero modifier or maybe a plus one in some situations. That's That was about it. Uh, even in Maxwell's case over here, it just could not uh, take advantage of those tactics. The British were able to match him. And this is the result. Uh, one unit from Green, Stack, did retreat. I think they're currently here. One hex retreat. Uh, let me see. One, two, three. I think this, yeah. Right here we have a disrupted unit. And I believe that was the unit that was in this hex. He retreated three hexes. One, two, three three and was disrupted. He retreated across the ferry, which I believe he can do. And he joined the other two units in that hex, which is a strength one and a battery. So that's what happened to the unit that was previously in this location. Uh, he should be there. So that is the current look of the fighting. Uh, I think overall the British were very successful. Uh, even here, their weak attack in this case really uh, could have been disastrous, uh, but it wasn't. So, not too bad. They fell back one hex. That's okay. I can deal with that. One thing I do have to do is I have to go to my video playback and look where this cannon was. Because when I, I double-checked, he was sitting right there, right in the middle of those three hexes. I'm not sure where he was. i got to look where he was. Uh so I can do his artillery fire in the next uh, segment of turn six. All right, folks, that is the situation. Pretty brutal. Uh, but that said, the Patriots are still in a relatively strong position here. They still have a couple units on the heights, and this breastworks is undefended. Uh, but all in all, I think the British are better off in this. 
Uh, they also have a foothold on the heights. They also have this position here at a primary ford, which effectively cuts off any retreat for the Americans, at least in this direction, and opens up for an attack on Proctor's battery. And I think that's good news for Kniffhausen, who's down here, by the way. Uh, I think he's going to look forward to advancing his reserve forces forward across that primary ford. And, well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And we'll see what the Americans do with Green over here. This is going to be really interesting. I'm really enjoying this. Uh, so that's the situation over here after all those close combats, folks. And, of course, this is the look at the overall battlefield at the moment. Uh, this is important to pay attention to. As you can see, the morale of the Patriots has dropped to 11. Uh, boy, that is disastrous uh, for the Patriots. They've been suffering a lot. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that Green came across that uh, Ford on the Patriot left wing. In force like that, I mean, those combat results can be brutal getting units captured and so on. Hey, Maxwell has been captured. That's That was a pretty big loss, actually. The British victory points, by the way, are at eight and a half at the conclusion of their segment of turn six. And the Americans are at one, so they went up a half a point. I'm trying to remember why that happened. British, of course, bumped up a couple spaces since the start, so it's looking good for them. Morale is shifting in their favor. Their army is happy. And, yeah, so so far so good as far as morale is concerned. No momentum was used for the British. Uh, these guys are all rallied up and can, again, begin moving forward in this probing attack, and trying to attempt to capture this ford. Not essential, but it's nice to have that option. Uh, yeah, next turn is going to be... We're still in turn six, but it's going to be the Patriots up next and they're going to have to do some thinking here what is green going to do uh, the british are in position across the ford and attack proctor's battery uh, and there's not really much they have to reinforce proctor's position because they're all across here with green uh, it's going to be interesting but that said the patriots are in a position to counterattack if they maneuver well enough to actually cut off Grant if he does force a crossing here. We'll see. This is really going to be interesting. And of course the Patriots have at least one unit to rally. Well, two units actually. Uh, we'll see if they can do that. Uh, one is adjacent to the enemy. Uh, yeah, so that's that. It's going to be interesting. I'm going to get into that I think into the next episode when I talk about uh, the strategy I'm going to adapt or adopt at this point for the Patriots. And if we look up top here further to the north. Uh, Sterling's force is getting in position. He is hustling, of course. I'm going to... Um, I don't know. There's really not a whole lot going to change my plan here. We're going to engage the British and hold them off as quickly as we can. First step, occupy Birmingham Meeting House. Get our cavalry on the wings uh, to prevent any breakthroughs, uh, him slipping some troops through. I'm pretty sure he's going to focus his attacks here and on the road, and it's pretty obvious. So Sterling is just setting up. I think he's still in a good position to get ready. Uh, we'll see how he deploys his troops in the upcoming uh, his segment of turn six. And there's not much British here to come across at him. I don't know if we'll attack. We could. That would really throw the British back a little bit. But I don't know. We'll see. And yeah, there is that. They do have some reinforcements coming on. As you can see down here, they will get this at the top of their turn. And he will be coming on, I believe, here. Let me move these guys down a little bit. These are reinforcements for turn nine. Uh, right here. Point C. And he's going to be hustling up this path here. Can't use strategic movement down here. Special role for the dungeon bottom, as it's called. But he will get up to this position, most likely. And that will release this unit. It can finally start moving. And, yeah, this will be a position where there's going to be at least a couple units. Five strength points worth of units. A plus two morale. 
So, yeah, Congress's own. That is going to be useful, but I don't know how it's going to, what role it's going to play in this battle, whether or not he wants to use it to the top here and support Sterling and threaten the British flank with that. I don't know if that's going to be useful. Or perhaps in this direction over here, if he stays on that road, he could quickly get up to this ford and in a position to reinforce the Patriots here, part of Sullivan's uh, force over here. That's most likely the best use of them. We shall see. Uh, yeah, more of a tactical use of those units than a strategic one. I don't think anything's going to change the overall battle here in a big way with just those couple units. So there we go, folks. I hope you enjoyed. We're a half hour into this episode. And stay tuned for part 10, I believe. And that's going to go into the Patriot uh, part of turn 6. What are they going to do? And this is it, folks. How is coming? He'll be on in turn 7 with a slew of troops coming on up behind these initial forces. And we're going to see what happens up there. It's like I was talking before when we first started. It's, it's, it's almost like this is going to turn into two separate battles. You got the guys to the north fighting how directly, Sterling. And then you got this battle over here at the Ford, which has potential to really expand because you got the British down here, which could cross anywhere they want here. Although this is going to be brutal, slow, passing through woods. They got to go across the creek itself. And there is a lot of cannon, a lot of infantry up there on the hills. Not strong units, but still. Uh, yeah, there's a lot to deal with there. I think the British's best bet is to continue pressing here with Grant and get across. But I don't know if he wants to attack that Proctor's battery at the moment. He doesn't have a whole lot to engage. Uh, if things go bad, he has no support. And maybe the Americans see that and will attempt to cut him off from any reinforcements in case it does go bad for him. Uh, we'll see. I think uh, it's going to be most interesting for me uh, thinking about this over here with Green's attack, his counterattack across the Brandywine. It's a very interesting situation. So there you go, folks. That's part nine to my refight of Brandywine. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, GMT's Great Battles of the American Revolution. Fantastic series. I'm having a lot of fun playing this battle. Uh, I hope you guys are having fun watching it, too. Uh, leave me some feedback on that. Uh, like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Stay tuned for part 10, and we'll see how the Patriots respond to uh, this turn of events. All right, folks. Thanks for watching. Hang in there. It's only going to get better. You guys take care.